looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 and you also get automatically entered into the M20 booster box giveaway which runs until July 15th. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Black White Vampires updated with Core Set 2020 and there's a ton of new additions from M20. The big headliner of course being Sorin, Imperius Bloodlord, a 3 mana planeswalker that starts out at 4 loyalty, has 2 different plus 1 abilities. The first one says target creature we control against death touch and lifelink until end of turn and if it's a vampire we also get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Then the second plus 1 ability lets us sacrifice a vampire and when we do Sorin deals 3 damage to any target and we gain 3 life so it can help us take out smaller creatures, finish off planeswalkers or just go upstairs to finish off an opponent. And then the minus 3 lets us put a vampire creature card from our hand onto the battlefield so we can use that ability right away and still keep a Surin at 1 loyalty. So that's a lot of very different and unique abilities on Surin which makes it pretty interesting to build around. There's a ton of ways we can build this new vampire deck, this is just one of them. We could even go as far as to include the Biobox Promo 6 mana vampire which we can sneak into play with Surin. I decided against it since if you don't draw the sword and it's a little bit clunky to get in play at six mana since our curve is otherwise relatively low but we're still taking advantage of the minus three in this deck with a champion of dusk five mana for a four four vampire knight from rivals of Ixalan and when the champion enters the battlefield we draw x cards and lose x life where x is the number of vampires we control so this can draw us a ton of cards and we don't have to pay the full five mana if we use Sorin to put them into play so that can allow for some very explosive starts and also a ton of card draw and then looking at some of the other additions from M20, of course at 1 mana we've got a Knight of the Ebon Legion, 1 mana for a 1-2 Vampire Knight that also has an activated ability for 3 mana giving it plus 3 plus 3 and the Death Touch until end of turn, so the threat of activation is pretty important there too. And then at the beginning of our end step, if a player lost 4 or more life this turn, we get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Knight, and it's important to point out that it doesn't matter which player lost 4 life, so we could also be the ones losing the 4 life, but we still get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Knight, and that's very important when it comes to Adanto Vanguard, which we can pay for life to make it indestructible, so that's one way of giving the knight an additional plus one plus one counter, and then of course Champion of the Dusk could also end up losing four or more life, so that's another way of pumping the knight without making the opponent lose four or more life, which of course is a more obvious way of pumping up our knight. And then the other big addition from M20 in this deck is Icon of Ancestry, which replaces Radiant Destiny as a slightly better anthem effect. We lose the Vigilance on the City's Blessing, but we gain an ability for three mana which lets us look at the top three cards of our library we can reveal a vampire from among those and put it into our hand so that's a nice card draw engine in the late game in the grindier matchups so let's take a look at our entire deck list at one mana we've got two copies of sky marcher aspirant one mana for a two one with a send so if we have 10 or more permanents we gain the city's blessing for the rest of the game and when we have the city's blessing the aspirant gains flying so becomes a two one flyer which is pretty relevant since that combines greatly with one of our three drops which we'll get to in a second then we've got our four copies of Knight of the Abbey Legion, which is probably our best one drop in the deck as it scales into the late game. And then we also have two copies of Legion's Landing as a legendary enchantment that makes a 1-1 vampire token with a lifelink. And if we attack with three or more creatures, we get to transform Legion's Landing into a Danto with a first fort, which can keep spawning 1-1 vampire tokens with lifelink. And it's also important to note that making two permanents is pretty relevant when it comes to enabling Ascent for the Sky Marcher Aspirant. But that's the only Ascent card in our deck, so it's not a major theme in our deck. And then we also have two copies of Disfigure as a nice cheap removal spell from M20, giving target creature minus two minus two until end of turn. So this can take out mana creatures from the opponent if we're on the draw and we don't want to get run over, and can also help out against other small creature decks. And then at two mana, we've got the full four copies of Adanto Vanguard, which is quite synergistic in this particular build of vampires, as it plays great with our Knight of the Ebon Legion, letting us pay for life to grow the knight. And then it also plays great with Soren's plus one ability, giving Oradanto Vanguard lifelink and a plus one plus one counter, means we can very easily pay the four life over and over again. Then we also have the full four copies of Dusk Legion Zealot as a nice 1-1 one -one that draws a card and loses one life when it enters the battlefield. So a nice expendable creature to sacrifice to Soren's second plus one ability and it also helps us smooth out our draw. And then we have the full four copies of Legion Lieutenant, one of the big payoff cards for being a vampire deck. A 2 mana 2-2 two -two giving other vampires we control plus 1 plus 1 so that the damage can add up very quickly. This plays great with our go wide plan since we've got a few token generators in our deck and can just kill the opponent very quickly, especially if we draw multiples. 
Then at 3 mana, the only card we haven't discussed yet is Mavern Fane, a 3 mana for a 2-2 legendary creature, and whenever one or more non-token vampires we control attack, we get to make a 1-1 vampire token with a lifelink, so this plays great alongside Adanto Vanguard, since we can curve Vanguard into Mavern Fane, the Vanguard can probably attack into whatever board state the opponent has, and generate a 1-1 lifelinker, which we can then use to sacrifice to Soren's abilities, for example, and just get ahead on board, and also plays great with a Sky Marcher Aspirant, since when this gains flying, we get a nice evasive creature that can keep trigger Mavron Fane to make more vampire tokens. Then we've got our full playset of Soren and two copies of Icon of Ancestry. We're not playing the Aerialist, which is a new vampire from M20, which is pretty good too, but we're not trying to maximize the life gain synergies in this particular vampire build, but maybe a good one for the future. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Call to the Feast, which also has a lot of synergy in our deck, making 3 1 1 vampire tokens with lifelink, so it helps us with our Go White theme, enabling Ascent for the Aspirant, helping us flip the Legion's Landing, plays great with our Anthem effects from Legion Lieutenant and Icon of Ancestry, and also provides provides some expendable creatures that we can sacrifice to Soren's plus one ability, so just does a lot of different things for the deck, also provides multiple vampires for Champion of Dusk to draw us additional cards, so just a great card in the deck, even though by itself it might not seem like the most powerful card. And then we also have two copies of Conclave Tribunal, we've got the Disfigure to deal with small stuff and Conclave Tribunal helps us deal with the bigger stuff, helping us exile target non land permanent opponent controls until the Tribunal leaves the battlefield, and it also has Convoke, so we can tap some of our tokens to maybe help us cast the Tribunal. And then at 5 mana our Curved Topper is Champion of Dusk to help us refuel. And then our mana base, pretty straightforward, 23 lands, since our curve is relatively low, we can put the Champion of Dusk in play with Soren, and otherwise we can usually operate with just 3 mana. And then we are not playing the new Temple of Silence, which is also pretty good, but since we have so many 1-drops and we want to be curving out, we really can't afford to play a ton of tap lands. So we just have 7 planes, 8 swamps, 4 godless shrines, and 4 isolated chapels. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Uh, we're missing a 1-drop, but I don't think we can send this one back. Turn 2. Depends whether or not we hit our land drop. We might play the Dusk Legion Zealot, since that curves nicely into our Sorin. And if we need to hit our land drops, then we might just want to make sure we do by playing the Zealot and drawing a card. Facing turn 1 Steam Vents. Yeah, let's just play the Zealot here. Usually it's better to play the Lieutenant when we already have somewhat of a board state, so the plus one plus one is impactful right away. And still no lands, so hopefully we find one next turn, otherwise we might be in a bit of trouble. Let's see what we're up against, is this maybe Blue-Red Phoenix? Tormenting Voice, discarding arc Light Phoenix, so that confirms our suspicions. Alright, so third land is good. Now we have, I think, two major options. One is Sorin, the other one's Mavern Fane. Or we can just Sorin minus and put Mavern Fane in play. Although then Sorin also gets into burn range, and we kind of need Sorin to survive so we can put these Champions of Dusk in play. So I think I'm just gonna go Mavern Fane, attack, make a token. And then maybe next turn we can Sorin minus, put Champion of Dusk in play to draw additional cards. Once we have some extra vampires in play, since right now it wouldn't draw us a ton of cards. Opponent's probably going to be forced to kill Mavron here. As we see Lightning Strike, that's fine. And now I'll take the opportunity to Soren minus, I think. We could also go Legion Lieutenant plus Knight, and then next turn go with the Soren play. That could also be reasonable. So next turn our opponent could Finale, which will probably get back the Lightning Strike. So, in that sense, it might be better to use Soren here, since that way if they Lightning Strike they can't kill the champion and they probably just kill Soren. whereas if we play Lieutenant then they have a nice target for this Lightning Strike when they go for the Finale of Promise. So let's Soren minus... and draw three cards. And then we also hit our Land Drop which lets us play the Knight. We didn't lose a full 4 life here, just a 3 life, so the knight's not gonna grow. If this isolated chapel was a godless shrine, then uh, the knight would have gotten a plus 1 plus 1 counter. So let's see if finale happens here. I guess they would get back Arc Light Phoenix to kill Soren, so they can probably lightning strike one of our creatures in play, but again, champion can survive at least. And if they don't have finale, 
or don't have three spells here, then we're in great shape. But I suspect we'll see an Arclight Phoenix return from the graveyard this turn. Alright, it's just going to be a Crackling Drake. So that is still somewhat of a roadblock, but we can use Surin's three damage to maybe take it out after attacking. So let's see. We can go Legion Lieutenant, Legion Lieutenant. How much damage is that? That's quite a bit. Can be bad. And then we'll attack. And then we can finish off the Crackling Drake if it blocks. And if it doesn't, then our opponent's taking lethal, so... In fact, they're forced to chump the Champion of Dusk, which is great. Because otherwise they would just die to Surin's 3 damage to the face. And we're not forced to sack anything, but I think I like doing this, just deal 3 to their face. That way Surin is lethal by himself. And we'll see how they get out of this predicament. Chart, of course. Sir Pwn's digging. Discards land. Don't think that's gonna cut it. They really needed multiple copies of Arclight Phoenix to return from the graveyard here. A lightning Strike, and then even if they have a Shock for the other Legion Lieutenant, and get back Arclight Phoenix, kill Surin, they're still dead to everything else. Alright, sweet. So managed to beat up on Blue Red Phoenix, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. No one drop, but still a keeper. Nice curve of two drops into Surin. Don't have any expensive vampire to sneak in play with the minus three. But we might draw one and still have a lot of utility otherwise with the Call to the Feast as well. And Adanta Vanguard into Surin is also a nice curve, being able to use the plus one counter on a creature that can probably survive most removal spells. Let's see what we're up against. Unclaimed Territory naming Merfolk. Alright, so we've got a nice grudge match here between the two Ixalan tribes. So the Merfolk matchup definitely gets improved thanks to Surin being able to take out those Merfolk Lords with the 3 damage, although right now we don't have any Vampires we really want to be sacrificing with Surin. Champion of Dusk is great. So how about we play Surin and then just put the Champion of Dusk in play? And then hopefully your opponent doesn't kill Surin, since we'll have a 4-4 on defense, which they might not want to attack into. And then next turn we can play Call to the Feast and sack a token to deal 3 damage to maybe take out this Deep Root Elite. Could also keep the Vanguard on defense if we want an extra blocker, which would not be unreasonable to make sure Surin survives, since I think that's an important part of our game plan. And I don't really want to sacrifice the Adanto Vanguard here. So yeah, let's play it super conservatively here. Draw two. And then I think just say go. To make sure Surin gets to stick around. Opponent could go Murfolk Trickster, tap something down, attack. It's just going to be a Herald into... Another Deep Root. The sequencing seems a little bit off here, so they probably wanted to play the other Deep Root first to get an extra plus one plus one counter. Alright, so we do get to use Sorin, and I think Call to the Feast is probably the best way to go here, instead of playing a bunch of two drops or one drops. Could even take out the Heralds if we wanted to. It feels wrong to keep the Deep Root Elites in play, but by killing the Herald maybe we get another Surin activation next turn. So I don't hit it. 
And then... Now I think I'm gonna attack with the Adon to Vanguard. Still have our tokens back on defense. I doubt the Deep Root Elites are gonna be attacking too much. And we eventually wanna get our opponent dead here. Since if they draw something like a Kumena, we don't really have an answer for that, and that could get out of hand. It's gonna be another speaker. Pumping up the two Deep Roots. And a Merfolk Mistbinder, alright. Well, now our opponent has a lot of power and toughness to work with. And they could definitely threaten Soren. If we can, we want to keep Soren alive, so we can take out the Mistbinder. But we'll see whether or not that's feasible here. They're gonna make a 5-5 speaker, so they have one good attacker. So I don't think the Deep Roots will be attacking here, considering we have a Champion of Dusk on defense. They could have made Deep Root into a 4-4, so it would have been a good attacker into this board. But our opponent just decides to hang back, which I think is good for us. So let's see first what we draw off of this Dusk Legion Zealot, which also makes for a better sacrifice target than a lifelinking token. Icon is a nice pickup. So let's kill... I guess both Deep Root and Mistbinder are threatening here. I think I'm gonna kill the Mistbinder. Sacking the Dusk Legion Zealots. And then, I think we just play the two Vampires here. So we can play Lieutenant. Attack with just Adonto Vanguard. And then play the Aspirant. And we're gonna have the... City's Blessing no matter what here, otherwise we might have wanted to play Aspirant before sacrificing the Dusk Legion Zealot to have one extra permanent in play. But we got her regardless. Alright, so we've got our opponent at 11, we've got a 3-2 Flyer, as pressure, although this Benthic Biomancer is not bad. Plays pretty well alongside the Deep Root Elites, letting the opponent sculpt their draws with the ability on the Biomancer. This opponent's got a 5-5 Kumena Speaker, but still no attacks. And uh, our hand goes pretty well into the late game here with Icon providing additional cards. So let's start by playing the Zealot, see what we draw. And this game really showcased the power of Soren, just helping us take out all these Merfolk Lords. So again, we'll just take out the Deep Root Elite here. We'll sacrifice Zealots. Take out Deep Root Elites. And if we play the Icon, we can still attack with our Danto Vanguard. Name a Vampire, and our opponent's gonna scoop it up a bit too far behind. Alright, sweet. So, Soren definitely doing a ton of work here. Alright, we're on the play. We're still not drawing any 1-drops on turn 1, but that's okay. The rest of our hand is still fine. And don't think it really matters what we lead with here. Turn 2 Lieutenant is not our ideal 2-drop. But still better than not adding anything to the board. And the next turn we have a few different options. Incubation Druid, alright. Don't really wanna sacrifice our Legion Lieutenant here, so I think Mavern Fane... Or we could Soren into Mavern Fane. I guess it makes sense too. Like, the mana efficiency of not having to spend 3 mana on Soren doesn't matter a whole lot here with this hand, since we don't have a ton of expensive cards in hand. But it's probably still just a good tempo play to do so. Tank with Lieutenants, make a token. And then next turn we can just spend 4 mana on this Conclave Tribunal if we want to. And it's not like Surin is really being threatened by this Incubation Druid. So minusing doesn't really hurt. Opponent just says go, keeping up 4 mana, which represents something like a Frilled Mystic perhaps, maybe a Chemist's Insight. I think we can probably start by attacking. Could also use the plus to maybe put Mavern 
out of range of a potential Frilled Mystic. I think I like that. And then not attack with the Legion Lieutenant. Seems okay. And not play anything pre-combat in case they do have a Frilled Mystic. And there it is. 3-2. And it's just gonna trade for a token. And I think I like being mana efficient here and just going Aspirant into Tribunal, getting rid of the Incubation Druid. Incubation Druid might not seem like a threat, but just slowing the opponent down when they're already behind seems like a good idea. And we also gain the City's Blessing for next turn. And then Surin plus Mavrin providing Vampire tokens every turn is pretty strong too. And Trancing Melody stealing our Legion Lieutenant, that's too bad. I think we'll have to kill our own Legion Lieutenant here, sadly. Sacking the token. Get in for five. I'll keep land in hand, I don't think there's a downside to really doing so. I guess we could top deck or 5 drop and then I guess that's probably a reason to still play our land here. But yeah, opponent just concedes so we're able to navigate our way past this frilled mystic and then our opponent was pretty far behind on board. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's not particularly explosive but we do have this figure at least to help us out. So I think I'll keep, and then hopefully we can draw into a 1-drop or a 2-drop next turn. Up against Temple of Mystery. So this is probably a matchup where this figure is not going to be at its best. But I'll still play our Swamp here in case we need to kill a mana creature on turn 2. Alright, Rootbound Cracks, so it could be the Teamer Elementals deck. And our hand is pretty clunky here, I'm drawing 2 Conclave Tribunals, 2 Champion of Dusk. No one or two drops, but at least we can deal with the Risen Reef. Alright, it's gonna be Field of the Dead, so our opponent also with a pretty slow draw. Although they might have an answer for this Mavern Fane. And it's gonna be Gross Spiral instead. Alright. Paradise Druids, that one we can't disfigure, and a second one. Adanto Vanguard a bit late to the party. I think I'm okay trading Mavern Fane for a Paradise Druid and getting a token. Opponent is just gonna take it. So I'll play Vanguard. And say go. If we draw 5th land, Champion of Dusk is going to be decent. What we're really afraid of here is something like a Chandra at 6 mana wiping the board. But it would also kill their mana dorks I guess, so... Who knows, maybe they're not on elementals after all and just a ramp deck with uh, Field of the Dead, maybe Scape Shift, who knows. The upside of using this figure here is that Mavern Fane can attack without our opponent being able to double block. And if we draw a fifth land, we might want to play Champion of Dusk instead of having to spend one mana on this figure. So there's still some upside to using this figure here. And I think I'm gonna go for it. Sure, we could kill a Paradise Druid, but our opponent has infinite mana anyway here. And then now we can attack and then go Knight plus Tribunal to get rid of a Paradise Druid anyway. We'll pay the 4. And then I guess we might as well keep the Vampire token untapped in case we want to block Paradise Druid. 
and it feels reasonable to uh, spend a tribunal when we have another one in hand. Knight grows because we paid four to the Adanto Vanguard. Taking two from Breeding Pool probably implies they have something big coming up. It's gonna be a Hydroid Crisis. X equals seven. And gaining three life and drawing three cards. But we do have another Conclave Tribunal coming up. All right, let's let's uh, let's draw a lot of cards here. A lot of lands. Let's Tribunal. Tapping. This, 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 and I guess it doesn't really matter which one here. Get rid of Krasis. Attack, and the knight will pick up another plus one plus one counter. But our draws from the champion weren't great. We would have loved to draw some Legion Lieutenants, some Sorlins. Maybe some icons of ancestry, but I guess we can maybe try again with the second champion, although second champion with this many creatures in place is pretty risky. Alright, Samut is scary. Opponent could play a giant hasty creature maybe. Ooh, it's gonna be scape shifts. So I guess now all the zombies from Field of the Dead will gain haste, and we might just be dead here. Alright, well, nice uh, wombo combo from our opponent here. So our opponent needs to be careful here that they have enough different lands as well as still having Field of the Dead. And it looks like they got two Field of the Deads and then still enough lands so they get to trigger each Field of the Dead twice for every land that came into play. They even get to scry with all the temples. And then, thanks to the haste from Samut, we're dead. Alright, nice, so... Sweet combo from our opponent. Hadn't thought of uh, Samut plus hasty zombies yet. But that's one way of doing it as well. We now. Alright. Good games. All right, we're on the play, and I think we are going to make use of the London Mulligan here since we don't have any black mana, so if we fail to draw a black source within the next turn or two, then the sand kind of falls apart. So that's not a risk I'm willing to take. All right, the sand is totally fine. Which card do we put on the bottom? So we've got a turn one Aspirant, turn two either Zalt or Vanguard. Could be the Disfigure, since we're on the play, and we are going to try and be the aggressor. Although having some cheap interaction can be nice. If we were on the draw, I would probably keep the Disfigure, but on the play I think we can put it on the bottom. And then keep both two drops, since Vanguard applies the most pressure and then Zealot plays well with Sorin. And can also maybe draw us into a third land for Sorin. If we knew we were up against an opposing aggro deck, then we would maybe keep the Disfigure in favor of something else. And then lead with our Aspirants. Alright, got the third land, so we're totally fine playing the Vanguard. It's going to be a Wild Growth Walker. So here the upside of having played Zealot instead of Vanguard is that we could have now played Surin, sacking the Zealot to kill the Wild Growth, which we prefer over sacrificing one of the creatures we have in play. I think we still need to kill this Wild Growth Walker before it gets bigger. So I will play Surin here and then sacrifice the Aspirant.
It's a little bit drastic, but uh, can't let a wild growth walker get out of hand. And then next turn we have more sacrifice fodder if we need to deal 3 damage, otherwise plussing to grow the vanguard is also a fine play. And our opponent's just gonna pass a turn, that's fine. So let's play a zealot, see what we draw. And play a lieutenant. Pump up our vanguard. And attack. So we're empty handed, but we're pretty far ahead on board. So this would be a great time to draw our Champion of Dusk. Opponent with a Lanor Elves, presumably off the top. Conclave Tribunals, not bad. So what are we doing here? So our opponent is forced to chump block here unless they have anything. So I guess we can just kill them if we Tribunal the Elves and then pump our team with uh, Soren's Plus. So I guess we'll diversify here and pump the Zealots. And that's exactly 10 damage. Alright, so opponent with a slightly slower draw. And Soren again being pretty important, helping us deal with Wild Growth Walker before it got out of hand. Alright, so that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.